I'm so lucky to be able to do this, right? Because, you know, there's me and my global and macro investor guys thinking about the world and writing for all these kind of hedge fund managers and family offices and all of that stuff. And I started to see the world differently. And so I wanted to explore it in real vision. So it's kind of me taking over the platform for two weeks and saying, listen, here's my hypothesis, the exponential age. And you and I sat down on the Monday and went through it in great detail for we laid it all out. And then the ability for myself to go and continue to interview people on this theme or get others to go and interview people was fantastic because you can follow the narrative through and explore lots of the topics. And, you know, I kicked it off with you and then followed by Bill Tai. You know, Bill's like, right. it's an unbelievable thinker. You know, every time I talk to him, my head explodes. Um, <laughs> And, you know, he's seen so much of the future. I don't know how he sees, you know, some crappy tech startup with a non-functioning product. And he figures out this is going to change the world. You know, whether he did it with, with um, Zoom or whether he did it with Dapper Labs when they first did Crypto Kitties. You know, most of us were chuckling away saying this is a bunch of rubbish. And he's like, no, no, you don't understand what this is. And he was dead right. You know, because Dapper Labs then went on to do this NBA kind of slam dunks thing and have started creating the new world of NFTs, which nobody even thought about properly. So that was really interesting. Then Ash and John Nod says that interview, really interesting about healthcare and how exponential changes are happening there. I mean, we've all seen it with the vaccine. You know, that the, the speed of approval and development of this vaccine was staggering. Um, and that was because the technology was there already the whole kind of human genome project had been working in the background. Massive amounts of data had been crunched. Artificial intelligence is applied, you know, distributed computing power. All of this stuff in the background, exponential things, had all gone together to then create a breakthrough moment for, for, for everybody. And that's going to spread. Now that the technology has been accepted, we can then apply it to other things. But that's happening all over the healthcare world. So that whole thing is changing, whether it ends up being wearable devices, all sorts of things. So that was a really interesting thing. And then your interview was at Azeem, again, framing the big picture, but also looking at some of the problems, because this is going to take societal frictions. And I tweeted out this week um, about our series, A World on a Brink, which was mm, a five, part right. five long, um, massive deep dive with Dee Smith, which is like a documentary that frames all of this. It was a lot of where my th thinking really started to come together was by watching that. I've watched it maybe four times now, which is a, you know, that's 20 hours of watching that. <laughs> it's so good and it's so spot on. And every time I watch it, I'm like, oh my God, this was dead right. About how this change, this pace of change, this exponential age creates problems for all of us to try and come to terms with. So that was really interesting as well. And then I've been following the share price of VW. And, you know, the car companies have been pretty crappy, obviously, through COVID. And then suddenly VW exploded higher. I'm like, what was that about? And I started digging in and realizing that they were one of the car companies at the forefront of change. And so I want to know what they were up to and how they thought of it. So managed amazingly, Haley managed to get me a booking with the head of innovation. And that was stunning to sit down and talk to him about where this is all going. Um, firstly, one of the things we found out is that these legacy car companies, unlike the startups like Tesla and Nikolai and stuff, had to start with a traditional business and build these businesses on the side. And it was just a pouring in of costs that had to fund out their balance sheet as opposed to raising capital as the startups had. Right. So it yeah. was slower, it cost them money, it cost them margin. And now they're starting to launch product and it's starting to come clearer where they're coming. It's starting, people are starting to realize that car companies are going to go from linear to exponential. Firstly, an adoption of elect, uh, electrovoltaic vehicles, but then all of the technology, they've become technology companies. They weren't, they were linear improvements to a very old um, technology. Now that's changed completely, throw it out. And we've got the exponential adoption of battery technology the exponential adoption of Internet of Things, autonomous vehicles and what that means for the world, 5G, 
uh, smart cities, and all of this kind of added <laughs> together. It's like, oh my God, the car company is now at the epicenter of something massive, and then renewable energy is part of that whole thing, and carbon offsets and all of this. It's it's incredible. So really amazing week of like mind blowing, deep learning about. Okay, there's some real opportunity. We might live in a slightly fucked world where interest rates can't go anywhere, currencies don't move anywhere, credit markets are kind of manipulated, but somewhere within that is this big opportunity to make some exponential money. And, and this is the key point of exponential trends, is usually within these things, people overestimate the speed of change in the beginning and underestimate the speed and magnitude of change at the end. So the long picture, they don't get right at all. They far off, they underestimate it all. Short term, they think it's all going to occur immediately. So we tend to create boom bust cycles within this, and that's pretty normal. We see it within Bitcoin, we've seen it within Amazon, we've seen it within all of these things. You know, excess enthusiasm, they know I'm all wrong, and they're called S-curves generally. Um, and that's very normal for this space. You see it in startups. You see it in building real vision now. We go through these moments of euphoria, like we've cracked it, and then we're like, we're idiots, and it's all terrible, and then this is amazing. That is the life cycle of, of these things, particularly when you're trying to build network adoption models. So the way to look at it over time is what is their, the growth of their, their network, not necessarily their sales, because that will get you down the wrong path, is, is their network adoption within that? Now, you know, the car companies, I don't know who's going to win this. And that was the discussion with VW, you know, because somebody's going to make a trillion dollars out of being the company that cracks the best autonomous driving. Now, over time, other players will come in. But could it be Waymo? Could it be could it be VW and their partnerships? Could it be um, Tesla? Or could it be somebody else? We don't know. I know Josh Wolf has invested in a company doing this. We don't know, but the only way to price a whole space moving is, as you say, you create a basket of call options, and over time, some of those call options will be worth zero, others will be worth 100x, and that's fine. Now, it gets a little bit easier than VC, because it's quite difficult to know any adoption at all with a VC model, um, because it's pre-revenue often. But here, we we can sort of see it as we go, so you can lower the risks of making those big bets. Um, and there are you know, smarter ways of doing it. You know, There are ways of finding fund managers who can do this for you so they can hold it within a portfolio so you don't have to manage 100 different names. Um, or you can concentrate your bet in something that, like copper, is going to benefit from the whole EV electrical electricity revolution. Well, copper is likely to do well over time, and there's a short supply of copper. So there's ways of taking this bet that are not as risky because it captures the overall theme. Um, and I think, you know, crypto for me has been one of those because you can hold baskets of stuff. But that whole space, you know, I tweeted something about this yesterday. That whole space is going to go from 126 million users. It's growing at 113% a year in terms of number of users. It will get to, even if it slows to the rate that the internet grew at in its first 10 years, it's and that was 63% a year. So this is the fastest growing adoption of any technology in all recorded history. If this continues to grow just at the rate the internet did, we get to a billion users by 2024. Uh, that's quite fast. <laughs> and that'll be the fastest yeah. adoption of any technology to a billion people in all recorded history. And then we throw in stuff like Facebook DM and stuff like that. And we talked about this in our interview. These things are incredible. So how do you participate in that? Well, at a simple level, Bitcoin will work. And you will have an up and down cycle, like you said. There'll be excess enthusiasm, then this is not going to happen, and then, oh my God, this is all happening. And that's how it works. 